Good morning and welcome to Distilling in Australia. My name is Nick and it is about 10 past 7 in the morning here where I am and today I'm going to be doing a uh, vodka run. Uh, so I'm using a uh, sugar wash that I've been fermenting for the last 12 days. I'm going to do an SG reading on that shortly. Uh, should be down to 1. I uh, started at 1.08 so uh, we'll get around about 9-10% uh, uh, alcohol potential out of that. Uh, so I'm looking to get around about 15, 15 and a half litres of vodka at around about 85%. That's, that's what I'm aiming for. It is a sugar wash and it's going to be the last of the sugar washes that I do for a little while. Um, I, oh, there goes Jack. Uh, for those of you who've been watching, you know, you know about Jack, but anyway. All right, so today what I'm going to be doing is this is probably going to be the last of the sugar washes I do for a while. Um, I have been trying to source molasses. And I can tell you that actually getting molasses is quite a feat. Um, it's, it's really hard to, to source in, in larger than normal quantities if you don't want to pay too much for it. And let's face it, I'm pretty tight, so I don't want to pay any more. But it turns out that uh, the, you know, the big white uh, containers uh, holds a thousand litres. They're wanting uh, about $1.30 a kilogram for molasses uh, to deliver that thousand litres, which is about 1,300 kilograms of, um, uh, of molasses, because molasses uh, specific uh, density is about 1.36, 1.37 uh, there. So it means that for every litre of molasses it weighs 1.36 kilograms. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I wanted to buy a couple of um, drums of it, uh, so yeah, about 205 litres in a drum, uh, and I wanted, fair, I wanted so what they call mill molasses. So mill molasses is one that is just coming straight out of the mill. It hasn't been refined or filtered or anything like that because I actually want to keep some of the organics uh, in the molasses that, uh, that, that uh, is uh, natural in the product. But it, it, it's interesting because um, at Woolies, uh, you can for sake, buy sugar at $1.10 a kilo uh, you know, in a two kilo bag. And, and the molasses is $1.30. Molasses happens to be a, you know, a wa well, essentially a waste product of, um, of sugar. But it turns out that there's actually a very large market for molasses, uh, for stock feed, for the food industry. So just something to be aware of. Um, if you're looking at uh, getting into this and you're thinking, oh, you know, I'll just use molasses. Because if you're paying you know, the, the retail price for uh, molasses, it uh, very quickly becomes uneconomical. So, Anyway, I've managed to source some uh, molasses uh, in drums, uh, mill molasses, and uh, that's been quite an effort. And I get that uh, first, first of those two drums will be coming in uh, at the beginning of uh, February. So that's when I'll be moving over and doing, um, uh, moving into more of the rums, which is where I particularly want to go. But I've just been experimenting, as you know, if you've been watching the channel, with uh, sugar washes at this stage. I'm not into whiskies. Um, you know, it's not my thing, so I'm not into the grain mashes, and I live in the sugar belt, so, uh, you know, the grains is not something really a source of, uh, accessible for me. So, you know, if you live in, you know, other areas like New South Wales, um, Victoria, you know, those other sort of areas where it's more the grain belt, uh, then, you know, those products are going to be more readily available to you. So, uh, my, rum's my thing, and especially with spice rum. So that's that's where I'm heading, and that's that's where I want to go. But I just got to do a, a vodka run, um, just just see how you know, it goes. Uh, temperature on the fermenter now is at 28. Now, interesting with the, the fermenter. When I started this off, I, I tried something a little different. I um, started off at um, the natural water temperature, which was 24 Celsius uh, during the fermentation product. Now remember, there is 100 and 37 odd litres of uh, wash in here. So during the fermentation process, that temperature went from 24 to about 31 degrees, uh, just through that um, natural process of uh, the reaction of the yeast with the sugars and naturally heating up as it did so. So it's down down to 28, and uh, I'll be testing it in a minute just to see what the SG is. Um, so I've uh, got to try something new, and I've uh, got now fridge cam, so I've got a little camera up there, hello. Uh, it's a bit of a fish eye. I have no idea how good or bad it's going to be, but it gives you a bit of a more of a uh, panoramic view of uh, what's going on. So um, hopefully uh, that will work. Um, so yeah, I'm new with that one, so we'll wait and see. 
Uh, for those who haven't been watching this uh, series, this is actually a licensed establishment. It is licensed through the ATO, so everything I'm doing here is 100% legal. What you see here is research and development, and that's all I'm really doing, is just playing around and working out what it is that I want to do and, and making mistakes as I do. I, I'm first to admit that I do make mistakes. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so just be aware that this is a licensed distillery for Hearts Distillery, um, and uh, yeah, we are um, doing everything in accordance with uh, our, our requirements. Okay, so... Um, First thing I'm going to do is uh, make up the still. I'm not going to bore you with the, the, the great long run, so I'm going to test the um, uh, SG on this and then uh, set up the still. Uh, I'm hoping that fridge cam will pick it up. I don't know if it's working or not, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll speed through this and uh, see how we go. Now, in the past, I've been running a gin basket um, on the uh, on the still uh, today when I set it up I'm actually going to bypass the gin basket I'm not going to be using a gin basket today because uh, with this uh, vodka I'm actually really going for almost what they refer to as a uh, neutral spirit so I'm trying to get as pure a product as I am can uh, last time I ran the still uh, it was running at around about 90 percent 92 percent uh, and at the end of the run uh, went down to about 50 percent I always cut it off at about 50 percent um, on, on the run and I ended up with 85% um, uh, ABV uh, in, the, uh, in my stainless steel container so I'll be filling this one up here um, for this particular run so I'm trying to get the purest of uh, product that I possibly can uh, so yeah so let's get started and uh, we'll see how we go all right, so we uh, all set up. It's uh, 8.40 a.m. I started at 8.30, 8.39 a.m. is when we kicked it off. I've got the pulse width modulator 75% as usual, just while I heat up. So this process is going to take about eight hours. Uh, and um, yeah, so in the meantime, I've checked the water and the circulation, so everything's working well there. Uh, manifold is working well, so this is my adjustment manifold and my bypass here that I, uh, if you've watched the previous video, uh, just to control the water flow through the deflegnator. Um, so yeah, so that's all in uh, order. So yeah, no, everything seems to be um, good and uh, hopefully we'll get a good uh, 15 litres, about 85%. So we'll see what happens uh, at the end, uh, but I'm not going to bore you with the whole process. You've seen it before. So it's the next morning. Yesterday we did the run uh, and uh, yeah, went through till about half past four, a little bit after four, half past four. So it's an eight hour run, uh, which is as usual. I don't run my still terribly hard. I do that deliberately. Um, I just rather uh, the, the bubble plates, because uh, as you know, I've got a four stage, um, four plate um, bubble plate reflux still. So I, l I like to uh, run it slowly so as the bubble plates work at their maximum uh, efficiency. So um, the result is, here it is, this is what I collected. Uh, SV just stands for storage vessel number five. And the figure here of 3.188, that's the weight of this container with the lid. Okay, and that's important and I'll explain why in a minute. So what I did is it comes straight out of the still, straight into this stainless steel container so it doesn't go anywhere else. And uh, we finished up uh, at 89%, so that was quite a high ABV. I ran it down to um, around about 60% uh, at the Parrot. Um, I, I have this thing where I don't push it. Uh, I'm not after every last drop of uh, alcohol out of the wash. I like to sort of really uh, take it uh, just the hearts, and uh, hence the word hearts distillery, but I like to just take the hearts. I took off the uh, heads and the methanol, uh, discarded those, they go into another storage vessel, and um, put the hearts in here. So all up, uh, the weight of this container now is uh, 14.902, less the 3.188 kilograms for the actual weight of the container, which meant they have a net volume here of 10.904 kilograms of 89 percent so what you do is you go to your calculator and you work it out and the uh, specific density now not gravity but the specific density of alcohol and water at 89 percent is 0 0.82062 which means that one liter of alcohol at 89 percent weighs 820.62 grams so it's lighter than water so when you do the calculations, I'll always take the 
0.904 and divide it by 0 0.82062, it tells me that I have 13.28 litres of alcohol in this container. So that's how you that's how we worked it out. And I'll um, there's there's calculators online that you can use, and most of them are pretty good. Um, so the, yeah, that's something that you can work out for yourself. Okay, so if I wanted to dilute this down to um, uh, forty percent, which is the the ABV that I'm aiming for with this particular uh, batch, now this is a a vodka out of a sugar wash, and I know there'll be people out there screaming at the at the television. You can't make you know you can't make a, a vodka out of a sugar wash, and technically you know you're probably right, but I'm actually going to be making a pink vodka. All right, so it's very clean, um, but I'm going to be making a pink vodka out of this particular product, and I'm just experimenting with some colours and flavours, uh, and so that's why I did it out of a sugar wash because uh, I just wanted that hint of uh, sweetness to it um, with the with the final product obviously there's no sugar in the product because it's all been distilled out but just has that that hint of sweetness with it so uh, to bring this down to 40 percent uh, i would need to add 16.268 liters of water which would give me a total volume in this container of uh, 28.69 litres. Now, as you can see, it is actually a 35 litre container. So that's why I got 35 litre containers, because I knew that out of a run, I'd end up with around about uh, 13, 14, maybe 15 litres of alcohol, which meant that it would be a 35 litre capacity. I could then dilute it down to 40% and would still the batch would stay in the drum. Okay, so one batch, one drum. So that's, that was the reason behind it. It was actually calculated and that's how I wanted it to work. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, make uh, 700 mils of 40% um, of the uh, vodka uh, in this particular bottle. So I'm gonna be using the 89% uh, uh, ABV in this, container and then uh, mixing this in to make uh, the 700 mils. But I actually want to make a pink vodka out of this. And yes, I know it's a sugar wash and technically, you know, it should be made out of grains or, or whatever. But the reason I'm doing a sugar wash with this particular clean spirit is because uh, I'm going to actually make it a pink vodka. So I'm going to infuse it with some uh, natural fruits uh, to get that nice pink uh, sort of fruity flavor. So I wanted a, a hint of sweetness in it um, as, uh, as part of the, uh, the product. So uh, to ha make sure I've got, uh, to, to have the 700 mils of product in this particular bottle, the ratio is I need 324 mils of um, alcohol at 89% and 370 mils of water. Now that will give me a total of 721 mils, but because of contraction, in other words, the molecules binding together, between the alcohol and the water, I'll actually end up with exactly 700 uh, mils of finished product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure out uh, the 324 mils. Now to do that, I'm actually using weight uh, because I don't know how accurate this is. And yes, I could use this and measure out 324 mils, but I honestly don't know how accurate that is. So uh, I'd rather rely on the scales, which I know are pretty accurate. Um, and so what you do is you take because we're going the opposite way now, so we're not going kilograms to uh, volume, we're going volume to weight, we actually multiply it by the, uh, the, the um, uh, difference of uh, the 89% alcohol to water. So in other words, it's going to be 324 mils multiplied by the 0 0.82062, which gives me 266 grams. So, I need 266 grams in this bottle, um, and then I'm going to macerate that with the berries, and then we'll see what the difference is in weight at that particular point in time, which means that I'll add less water to get to the 40%, because what happens as soon as I add fruit to it, which, uh, of course, I'm not adding sugar, it's not a sugary fruit, but just the fructose or the natural sugars that come out of the fruit will mean that the your, um, alchometer will actually not be accurate okay that won't accurately read it so you have to rely on the mass um, to make sure that uh, you get the 40% uh, ABV which is what I'm uh, aiming for here so we'll do that 
Now remember, I have the funnel in the bottle, so uh, when I take the funnel out, it's going to be a negative value there of 51 grams. So we'll weigh it with the nozzle in there. So I'm after 266 grams. Okay, that's 76. Now obviously the commercial distilleries have machines that do all this for them. Um, so, you know, I'm just I'm probably just demonstrating uh, how we can do it uh, as a, a lay person because um, uh, when I start to uh, sell these products and yes you know you can't buy this yet because I don't have my Queensland liquor license so this stuff is not for sale uh, but uh, I'm working on that this year so um, hopefully in the next few months I'll rectify that situation but at the moment um, you yeah, know this is just research and development and trying to get um, the products uh, right um, and uh, so they're unique to what I want to do and um, sorry 226 so yeah um, uh, nozzle Nick nozzle. Okay, 175. Well, it's actually more than 175 because I got the nozzle out of it. It's about 200 and something. Okay, so 226, 236, 246, 256, 262. 266, all 266, 265, that'll do. So that's 266 grams. All right, so that's my 324 mils in there. When I add the water to it, it's going to bring it up to about this level here, which will be the 700, but you'll find that it'll actually contract down. So it should, I imagine, just come to the sort of just up the neck of the bottle slightly once uh, I've added the water. But I'm not going to add the water to it at this stage. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add fruit to it, uh, extract the colours from the flavours from the fruit and infuse it. Then we're going to weigh it again, okay? So then I'll know whatever the difference is, um, it's going to be in the water that's come out of the fruit. Uh, and then I'll just put less water in, which is 370 mils. So I'll just take a little less out of that because um, obviously water is close enough to one-to-one -to -one, uh, for this purpose, uh, for the small quantity that I'm doing, so we don't have to worry about the specific density of water, which is not quite one, but close enough to it. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll, uh, I'll do that, and um, we'll come back, and uh, I'll show you uh, the finished product uh, when uh, that's been done. Uh, be back soon. All right, so what I've done is I've uh, put, transferred the uh, alcohol from this bottle, put it into this container, 266 grams of it. And what I've done is I've added 50 grams of fruit uh, to the product. And uh, it's all red fruits, a mixture of uh, black currants um, and uh, strawberries and uh, a few other different uh, fruits. So I only put 50 grams in there for the purpose of this experiment. So I'm going to cover it up with some aluminium foil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave it out. I'm actually going to put it in the fridge. And the reason I'm putting it in the fridge is that I want to minimize any evaporation because uh, obviously it's a very high concentrate uh, alcohol and uh, the infusion will take longer because it's been refrigerated uh, but I, I want to just try and minimize uh, as I said the evaporation loss so 
we'll leave that for the time being. Uh, I really just want to extract some of the um, uh, the uh, essential oils out of the fruit and uh, the colours, obviously, uh, infuse it into it, and then we'll strain it, put it back in here. We'll then check the weight, see what the weight is, um, and then how much water, extra water has been added, uh, and then we'll water it down with uh, what leftover water that we need to, and uh, then we will um, have. Uh, Technically, a 700 ml bottle at 40% uh, ABV, and we'll, we'll test the ABV at the end just to see the difference that the fruit makes to the final reading. Um, all right, so uh, I'll put this in the fridge and uh, I'll be back a bit later on. All right, now I'm transgressing here. I just wanted to show you something. Um, I made a gin, uh, those of you who have been watching it will know that I made a gin a little while ago. It was supposed to be a pink gin, and I ended up with this brownie sort of. Uh, horrible sort of color um, gin. Now, it actually tastes really good. I mean, the flavor is amazing. When you do mix it with um, uh, some berries, uh, it does come out really nice. It has uh, some sediment in there, which I don't mind. I don't, I'm not worried about the sediment and that sort of stuff because that's the botanicals that I've put into it and uh, it has a really great taste to it. I'm not going to have one now because it's what... 10 to 11 in the morning so yes no, I'm not interested in having a drink of that early in the morning but uh, very flavoursome so that was my first attempt to make it pink uh, so as you can see a uh, bit of a dismal failure um, used the same product but I did it uh, one way that I thought would work and it turned out that that was not the way to do it so then this is my second attempt at making a pink and yes I know it's in the Captain Morgan bottle but this is not a rum this is uh, just a neutral spirit that has been um, macerated the way I'm doing this uh, vodka at the moment so you can see it's a uh, lot dark it's almost a ruby sort of color um, now that was macerated for a couple of days and um, it was uh, it, this is the concentrate so I'm not going to let this one go as dark um, and by the time I water it down it should be a sort of a nice vibrant pink color this is what I'm going for I'm using a lot less fruit than I did in this first one that's why I measured out how much fruit I put on it the 50 50 grams of it so uh, we'll see what happens at the end of the day this um, is uh, well this was a run I did with uh, I infused the uh, spices in the gin bucket a basket and I was going to do a video on that but when I there's actually a couple of videos that I've done that I haven't posted that's why there hasn't been a, a video for a while because uh, I haven't liked the, the content and um, one of the videos when I did this one um, I didn't uh, frame it correctly so all you're looking at is sort of from here down which is really disconcerting so this was actually an infused uh, in the gin basket. I was trying to experiment by infusing the botanicals in through the gin basket. Now, although some of the botanicals did come through uh, in the final product, um, it, it didn't have the flavor profiles that I was looking for. And again, this was just a sugar wash uh, that I was just experimenting with just to see what the flavors were like, uh, if I could get the flavors to come through using the gin basket. If I was going to continue with using a gin basket or uh, infusion basket, whatever you want to call it, um, to infuse those uh, spices, I'd actually change it and make um, and get one made which is you know, a lot larger. Uh, so the, um, the, the steam coming up or the, the alcohol coming up through it has got a much larger surface area um, to bring it out so yeah it'd be something in the region of you know two three hundred mils in diameter which means you could spread your botanicals or you spread your spices out through that uh, and as the steam came through it would draw out more of it but in the gin basket I have it's simply too small uh, for doing this size um, of uh, batch. It's okay for juniper berries. So like I'll do the gin part of the juniper berries, um, sorry, the juniper berries part of the gin uh, by using the gin basket because certainly holds enough juniper berries to draw that oils into the, into the final product. But in terms of using it for other things, no, it's too small. So I'll need to get a bigger one. So another cost, another expense. And uh, if you, Thinking of doing this um, to save money, I can assure you 
it's much cheaper just to go to the local uh, Dan Murphy's and, and buy it, all right? So unless you're looking at going commercial, uh, to do this at home uh, is just not uh, really economical uh, if you're going to do it um, in any sort of volume. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, if, you, if you hate paying the taxes, well, you're better off paying the taxes because it well, turns out a lot cheaper than, uh, than setting up and doing it yourself. But as you know, my plan is to be doing this full time in about five years time or four years time now because we've had a year. So uh, we're now in the very much into the experimental stage. All right, so um, we'll see how that 50 gram works uh, with uh, that uh, 324 mils of 89% and uh, I will uh, be back uh, a little bit later on today. So it's now about 30 hours, 31 hours later, uh, and uh, the 50 grams of uh, fruit has been uh, uh, macerating in the 89% uh, alcohol. And so here is the moment of truth. I haven't actually looked at it. Uh, so I'm hoping that it's reached the right color. So we'll just take this off. Oh, looking good, looking good. So I'll just get my uh, desktop cam and uh, hopefully that's working. I'll just unlock it. There we go. So there we go. There we go. Okay. So that's what it's looking like. So that's a 50 grams of um, uh, the uh, fruit macerating in the uh, 266 grams of 89% proof alcohol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very fine strainer and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a fine strainer like that and I'm going to pour it into the bottle here and we'll see uh, what we've got left. So I'll just pause that. All right, this is going to be the tricky bit. Hopefully I don't spill too much of it. Oh, look at that colour. Beautiful. Okay. So it's 271 grams. So what's happened is that a bit of water out of the, um, out of the uh, fruit has uh, leached out of the fruit into the uh, into the mixture. So we've got about five grams of water into it. Now I'll just pop that back in there and I'll go back to my desktop cam and here we go. So hopefully, is that working? Oh, I'm still trying to work out how to use this desktop cam. Uh, hang on. So that's power, so it's on. There we go. Okay. So that just shows you how much of the colour has come out of um, out of the uh, fruit. So uh, yeah, it's a fair bit of uh, fair bit of colour. Now, look, I'll be honest. We've probably lost a little bit of alcohol here as well. Uh, so that's uh, that's to be expected but nevertheless we've got 271 so we were going to add 370 mils of water so I'm actually going to add 360 mils of water and I'm going to do that because we've got five mils in there uh, that has come from the fruit and uh, we've probably lost a, a few five mils so uh, I'm going to just reduce the dilution by another five mils. So we're going to put in 360 mils of water. So I'm just going to zero that. Okay, and uh, we'll get some water organized. So just give me a second. All right, so I'm back with my uh, filtered water. So I've just, I haven't measured it out. I've just put some in the, in the uh, container here and we're looking for 360 mils. So that'll be 360 grams. Now it'll be interesting to see if it just does go um, cloudy.
358, 357, uh, 363. So it's a little bit over 360, but that's okay. So there we have it. The first Haas Distillery Pink Vodka. I think it looks pretty good. So what I do is I put the cork in it. Give it a little bit of a shake. Not too much. Just gentle, gentle. Okay, we'll let the air bubbles settle out of it for a minute. I like it. I like the colour, I like the clarity, the bubbles not fussy me, that'll all come out. Just give that some time. Smell. Oh, you can certainly smell the berries. Yes. So yes, certainly coming through. Uh, and that was just 30 hours uh, maceration with, with those uh, 50 mils of berries. Now the berries are not going to go to waste. Um, they'll go well with a bit of ice cream, I think, uh, a bit later on. So we'll do that. So there we have it. 89% uh, sugar wash macerated directly with 50 mils, 50 grams, I should say, of um, mixed berries. And uh, we get a... Uh, very nice looking, clean, pink gin. Those bubbles are all gone away. Now, because this is a natural product, the thing with it is you, light will affect it. So if it's stored in a place where there's lots of sunlight, it will um, fade very quickly. So um, it's something that I need to be aware of. And so my, my bottles that I'm getting will uh, hopefully protect it from from that uh, from that deterioration of color the flavor will remain but the the color will fade if it's exposed to sunlight so that's something I need to take into account when thinking about uh, marketing it now as I've said before this is not available for sale so please don't get on the website and ask me if you can buy some because I'm not allowed to I am pursuing my uh, Queensland liquor license which um, I'm uh, doing now uh, so I've got a few things that I've got to go through and I will be doing a video on that because that'll be basically the last thing I do um, it's pretty well almost a year now since I first started this uh, travel so I've gone from absolutely having nothing to being a licensed distiller with uh, all my equipment and being able to uh, produce a very clean 89% uh, proof um, spirit uh, which I'm really, really happy about and I'm comfortable now with running the still. So, yeah, that's, um, that's been a big step. Uh, and, uh, yes, I'll be uh, ta letting this settle down. I'm not going to taste it right now. So I'm just going to let this sit maybe for a day or two um, and uh, then I'll uh, have a taste and just see uh, what the flavour is like because obviously I want that sort of berry sort of flavour to come through as well. Uh, yeah, so it'd be really nice in a cocktail. A lot of people don't like gins for argument's sake. Uh, so this is gets rid of that juniper berry sort of um, pine nutty sort of uh, flavour uh, and it's just a straight, uh, straight uh, pink liqueur, uh, not liqueur, pink spirit. Um, so yeah, so that's all I want to do today uh, with this. Uh, I might not quite finish up here. I think I'll give it another day because I haven't done a video for a while and I know that, but you know, I've been busy with other things. So uh, uh, we've had some family issues that we've had to contend with. So that's something that we've had to do. Uh, but I might leave that until um, maybe even later on tonight. I'll just see how I go and have a little taste test and see what it tastes like and uh, give you a report back. So anyway, that's it for now. Um, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back now and it's Sunday, so it's two days later. Uh, so you'll see there's a few more bottles here. This is the original uh, pink vodka that I did. I bought in a commercial vodka 
and I have my uh, neutral vodka here as well. Now, of course, my vodka is uh, from a sugar wash, so it's suitable for carnivores, herbivores, and celiacs. So uh, all three, all three uh, food groups uh, can uh, consume this. Obviously, this is the same, uh, except obviously if celiacs are allergic to berries, well, this won't work for them either. So what we're going to do is I, uh, I don't drink vodka, and I openly uh, admit that, so it's not my, my drink, but I have an expert. Uh, a person who has uh, been a long history of uh, vodka consumption uh, and so we've got here glass A, glass B and we're going to do a test with, uh, with uh, these two vodkas, a blind test uh, and she's going to compare these two vodkas uh, and see which one that she prefers. She won't know which uh, glass it is so I'm going to introduce Tamika to you and now Tamika is my uh, future daughter-in-law so uh, my son and her are uh, just recently engaged and so they're uh, going to be uh, getting married uh, sometime in the next year or so. So um, she's agreed to uh, come and uh, help me with this little experiment because she's quite honestly the only person I know that drinks vodka. So Tamika, come on in. Hi everyone. All right, so this is Tamika, my daughter-in-law. So uh, yes, my son is very lucky and bell crunching <laughs> way above his, um, his group class. Okay, so Tamika, we have the, the two vodkas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to turn around and face the wall. Okay. Now you just have it with lime and soda. Yes, please. Okay. And we're going to do two standard shots. Okay. Now do you like the lime squeezed or you just put it in there? Um, oh. A bit of squeeze, please. A bit of squeeze. Okay. So glass B and glass A with a little bit of squeeze and glass A with a little bit of squeeze. Now do you like ice with it? Um, I think that'll be fine. Just how Do it you is. normally have an ice or not? Uh, not really, no. No, not really? Okay, fine. All right, so we have the soda water. Okay, now take one bottle. Now, I'm a bit nervous because um, obviously uh, I have no idea if she's going to like this or not, so we'll see. So this is mine in that one. And this is the commercial one. Now I'm putting exactly the same amounts in both of them. Yep, that's fine. In that one, that's the commercial, and that's the not the commercial one. And I'll put the soda water in. Do you like it drowned or do you sort of like it just a little bit? Um Probably like a, like a halfway cup. Yep, sure. Yep. Okay, no worries. Okay, so I'm just making sure that they're about the same amount of vodka in them. Okay, so I'll just give them a little stir. A little stir. All right, okay, so you can turn around now. Okay, so we have glass A, glass A and glass B. Okay. okay, so you can choose whichever glass you like first and taste that. Well, they look the same. They look the same? Mm. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous now too. <laughs> okay, so that's A. Yep, that's A. Okay. How many shots are in there? Just one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you said two, I was like, ooh. No, 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 just one in each one. They taste pretty much the same. Yeah. The only difference is the smell. Right, yeah. Like, I think this is, is this your one? Which one do you prefer? They taste the same. They both taste like the same. It's just the smell. I think because yeah. I know the smell of back when we had the gin. Yep. So I don't know why I can smell it. I'm pretty sure that's the only difference. Yeah, this one's definitely yours. <laughs> this is definitely yours. Yeah, yeah, you picked it, yeah. Yeah. It's just the smell. The taste is like pretty much identical. A oh, identical but, taste? Yeah, they were both really nice. They're actually not very strong. I, like it's not very like you know not alcoholy. It's just yeah. like so smooth. Is it, yeah, yeah, smooth. So is it? Can you can you feel any difference in texture between the two of them? No, right? definitely not. They're like very um, yeah. They're really good. It's literally just the smell. That's it. So is the smell of that one offensive or which? No, it's just a different smell. It kind of smells, if anything, maybe a bit more like metallic. 
Okay, well, that's the last thing I wanted to hear. Metallic, um, not exactly what uh, a distiller uh, is looking for in a um, in the in the um, smell uh, uh, bouquet arena. Now, uh, I have actually uh, looked back at that and uh, sort of uh, had a bit of a think about what was going on there, and uh, I know what's happened, and it's because. Um, with the the uh, yeast I was using, it's a it's a champagne yeast, uh, and so what I have noticed is when I'm distilling, is you do get that very sort of very much that winey champagne uh, on the nose that comes through, which is okay if you're doing a gin or something like that because it sort of adds to the flavour profile. So it's fine from the gins, but uh, because we're looking for a clean. Uh, very clean spirit in a vodka. Um, it's um, it's something that uh, is not acceptable. So I've been in touch with my supplier and we've had a bit of a discussion. So I'm changing over the yeast profiles uh, that I'm using for the vodkas. Um, so they're in the process of being uh, delivered. Uh, and I'm now actually going to do another sugar wash, but I'm going to change the yeast profile that I'm or the yeast type that I'm I'm going to use. Um, and a little bit of the methodology on uh, how I'm going to ferment it uh, in my fermenter. Uh, and uh, we're going to do another sugar wash. So although I said at the beginning of the video I'm not going to do a sugar wash, I'm actually I am. I'm going to do another sugar wash uh, and uh, ferment it with a, a change of uh, a yeast uh, and try and uh, eliminate that sort of um, uh, champagne uh, sort of bouquet that you get uh, on the nose and I can smell it when it's fermenting so you know I knew it was sort of there but I really didn't put that much emphasis on it but Tamika uh, to her credit was honest and that's what I wanted was some honest feedback uh, and uh, came up with that uh, rather uh, interesting word metallic uh, so uh, yes definitely needs to be changed so all the produce that I've uh, done so far I'm actually going to redistill all that. Um, I'm going to clean it all out, redistill it, uh, and all that is going to be then made into the gins, which uh, I know it's perfectly good for. Uh, and so uh, methodology and all the rest of it, I'll, I'll make a really nice pink gin out of that. And then the new batch will look at the vodkas and uh, make a nice clean vodka out of that. So, so yes, um, we will continue on with the uh, appraisal. Right. A bit more yep. of a metallic smell. Yep. Whereas this one, I can mainly smell the lime. Right. I can mainly smell the lime of A, and this one just has a bit of a metallic smell, but it's not like a bad smell. Right. It's just, I wouldn't have smelt that before when drinking vodka. Yeah, no, because this yeah. is made from a grain. Oh, this is okay. a grain vodka, so it's actually fermented from, an, from grain, whereas this is made from sugar. Oh, so, so it's the sugar I can smell. Maybe. Yeah, so it's probably the sugar you can oh, smell, but it doesn't okay. have sugar in it because yeah, yeah, during yeah. the fermentation, the sugar comes out of it. Yeah, they just smell different. Okay. But they taste really good. Okay, so you, the taste is... Mm. Taste? The taste is like identical, but that's, I don't know if it's identical pure, but with the vodka and the lime and the soda water, I would say it's like on the same. Okay, so the what same. I get you to do okay. is I'm going to get you to try the berry. Okay. Okay, so... Now, I'm just going to get you to try the berry without anything added to it, mm -hmm. uh, and just the soda water. I'm just going to put yep. some soda in the water just to, to water it down a little bit. So I'm just going to do 30 mils of this one. Okay. Looks really pretty. Looks pretty? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... So is it going to taste like berry, or it got the colour from the it berry? It should taste like berry. So cool. it, it's been infused with berry, and I'll hark back the other day um, when I... Um, Soak the berries and I had those 50 grams of uh, berries left over and I said I was going to have them with ice cream. I did and uh, yeah, 89% alcohol in berries, yeah, it was, it was an experience, believe me. Oh my me. god, that would have yes. been strong. <laughs> so just, just for the record, I'm going, to, I'm going to infuse it 40% in future rather than also be 44% because it'll water it down a bit instead of uh, 89%. Uh, okay, now some more soda water. I'll yeah, this one has a similar smell too. But a bit fruitier smell yeah, to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, just put some more oh, soda okay. water in there. Okay. So I'll just do that, just water it down a bit. So just drink? Yeah, smell it and drink it or whatever, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, you can definitely tell that it's like an infused vodka. Right. I don't know if I can taste berries. It just tastes sweet. Sweet, because there's no added sugar in that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, uh, maybe it's from the berries it's gotten the sweetness Yeah, from. yeah, because I haven't added any sugar or anything to it. It's, it's just literally the berries that have been in like there. Like, if anything, I would think that this, instead of soda water, that had lemonade in it. Like really? it's actually quite like it's sweet. It's weird. It's quite sweet for something that doesn't have any sugar in it. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. It's nice. So, it's nice. I feel like yeah, it'd be a really nice, like refreshing drink. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add because uh, you know what I'm like with fruit and stuff. Yeah, I'd love to put it in there. Yeah, I know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of strawberries to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Yep. Okay. All right, so it becomes a strawberry pink vodka. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just see if that makes a difference, if it complements it or not. At the moment, it tastes the same, but maybe yeah, it needs to sit right. for a yeah, little no, bit. It might need to defrost a bit. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, but it's really nice. You like that? Mm, I do. It <laughs> actually tastes like instead of soda, what do you put lemonade in it compared to like these? Okay, because yeah, that is it's just that, yeah. there is no added sugar to that. That yeah, is just the sweet. infused berries mm. in it. So, you, but you're not getting that that any sort of berry flavour through. No, I'm just getting sweet. Okay, fair if enough. anything, yeah, I'm sure if that defrosted, you'd get more berries. Yep. But, All right, um, so we'll just we'll just let that sit aside. But I guess if moment. I didn't know, I would just think it's like pink okay. vodka. Yep, sure. Okay, so now we'll get serious. Okay, we'll have some. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, the guinea pig. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All Can right, so I'm just going to do a 10 mil shot, okay? okay? All right, so we won't do a big shot. So that's 10, close enough for 10 mils, okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so have a shot of that. Yeah, and that has a smell too. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's a strong shot there. Yeah. It's very, um... It tastes very like a very strong alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably the ABV is a little bit higher than the, the commercial one. So that's about 37. This is about 41. So it's a little bit stronger. Mm, okay, so, yeah. you, so you can probably taste the difference in alcohol. Yeah, no, it's definitely a stronger taste, but like still goes down nice. Still goes down right. Mm. So it's smooth on the palate. Yeah, it is smooth. So you're not getting the roughness down the back of your throat. Oh, no, no, no. It's mm. just like a normal shot. Like, you know, it's like a little bit warm. Okay. All right. So we'll try 10 mils of this one. Okay, so this is a little, this is about, uh, this is about the same strength as this one, 37%. All right, just have a drink of this so I can then taste. Yep, sure. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> and Tamika's not driving, Stuart's driving, so that's fine. I think I prefer the shot of that one. You prefer this one? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay. The All other right. one was like a bit too harsh. Right. No, I don't know. I'm probably using the wrong words. Okay. That one was like a bit more like, you know, burny shot. You know, right, you do yep. like a shot like Probably because it's, it's a bit stronger, but yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Whereas that was not as burny. Yeah, okay. And you guys would probably do it again. Whereas that one, I need to wait a while to do another shot. Right, okay, yep. <laughs> 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 All right, okay. So taste the same. Oh, sorry, taste the same. Taste the same. Same little bit of difference in smell. Smell, yeah. Which would account for the grain versus the yes. um, sugar. Okay. Now the pink one. Let's just get you to just try okay. that again. Yeah, I'm still just getting like a sweet taste. It's still a sweet taste. Mm. You're not getting that essence. Probably smell. not. Not like I wouldn't be like berry. But if you talk, like if you told me, I'd be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Right, where the, okay. where the sweet taste is coming from. Okay, no, that's fine because that was only infused for about thirty six hours, so I didn't infuse that for very long okay. because I got that I got that colour out of thirty six well, hours. Beautiful. So I like the colour. I just yeah. didn't want to overcook it uh, and make this colour too, too dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So not too bad. After. No, it's good. All right. It's good. I would think it was like the store bought. You okay. Know? All yeah. right. So success. Yeah, I think it's good. It was drinkable. Okay. Shottable. <laughs> drinkable and shottable. Yeah. Okay. All the right. only difference was this one just smelt a bit different to this one. Yep. But not not ba in a bad way. Right. And then that was a nice sweet. So it would probably be good if people. So like, if, we, if we had no added sugar. Yeah, and it'd yeah. be good for people who don't want to have lemonade but yep. don't like soda water because yep. they like something sweet. Yep. 
but they could have the soda water so it could stay low calories. Yep. And just get the sweetness from, from the vodka the, yeah, instead from the, of from lemonade. The berries, yeah. 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 No worries. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, there you go, guys. So my vodka expert has um, given me a level <laughs> playing field. <laughs> so uh, I won't say that it's better than the, the commercial one, but it's as good. I think it is really good. No, it's really good. Yeah, okay, so it's as good as the commercial one. So that's good. Um, my first batch of, uh, of vodka. Now, of course, you can't buy it because I don't have my Queensland liquor licence, I've said before, but I am working on that and uh, we'll go through the process on that mm. uh, in the next video. So I'm going to wrap this up now. Uh, this is the longest video. This has been going on since Wednesday, so five days of filming. So I've got to put it all together and I'll have it out in the next few days. So this vodka I uh, made is, was made on Wednesday. It's now Sunday. So uh, it's only about five days old. So, oh, really? <laughs> so hasn't That's had cool. a lot of time to mature. So anyway... Uh, thank you, Tamika. You're so welcome. Thank you. Oh, welcome to the program you. and have your cameo back. appointment. Know, have me back anytime. <laughs> have me back anytime for tasting. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you again soon. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye. Distilling alcohol is illegal in Australia unless you hold the appropriate licenses and permits. I am not a lawyer and the contents of this video are not intended to be legal advice. Do not rely on any information contained in this video and seek your own legal professional advice before making any decisions. Be aware the Australian Tax Office and the local law enforcement agencies will be taking interest in this channel due to its content. Please keep this in mind before posting any comments. Any comments posted are the opinion of the person posting and not of this channel. Let's get started.